Hello everyone, I'm Anthony Abizayed, Senior Programs Associate at Mentor Arabia. I would like to thank you for joining us today. We are pleased to have Professor Mikhail Miovisky with us today's, uh, on today's webinar on quality in school-based and school substance use prevention. Mikhail is a professor of clinical psychology, Charles University in Prague, Czech Republic. He graduated from the Physiological Faculty of Masari University in Brno in 1998. In 2002, he received a PhD degree in clinical psychology at Palaki University in Olomouc. He is vice dean for non medical health studies programs and head department of addictology of the first medical faculty, Charles University, Prague, and General Technical Hospital in Prague. He runs a bachelor, master, and postgraduate PhD addiction study program on Charles University in Prague. Mikhail does research in behavioral science, health psychology, and clinical psychology with special focus on addictions. His, dom his dominant interest are prevention and clinical oriented research and practice, addiction specific training and education program with special focus on university degree programs and publishing addiction science. He works and promotes newly established consortium of university with, special, with specialized addiction academic degree programs at ICUDDR and practice on the and practice on discussion related to profiling of substance use professionals. In this webinar, we will learn how to understand the key concepts in quality control and quality assurance in school prevention, how to adopt international standards, and what is possible to develop in this area. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar, so please submit your questions in the questions box. Professor Mikhail, you can now start your presentation, please. Great. Thank you, Anthony, and dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like to express my thanks for inviting me for, and, and uh, making this opportunity to speak with you and, and present uh, introduction to, to quality standards and, and quality control system. And don't worry, I'm not so big fan of uh, Game of Thrones, but I, I see some parallels with um, uh, quality control system and quality standards and, and uh, motto of family great joy from this series uh, what is what is that may never die and sometimes i think and i see that quality control is almost dead and we try to reborn it like a phoenix again and again and we need to do it and we have to discuss it and we need to implement it but uh, in fact it's always very difficult in the real world and um, and and in our everyday practice there are many reasons behind it and one of these reasons is uh, that uh, prevention uh, is still not recognized as a unique field and uh, the science is not uh, well translated from science and from research to practice and there are many misunderstandings and uh, usually still we can see that uh, in reality schools and teachers are using uh, prevention interventions with no enough evidence and non-effective uh, 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 interventions and if these interventions failed uh, we are losing uh, public confidence and people don't trust us and and politicians don't trust us and we need to change this approach and uh, the movement critical movement is from some prevention to real uh, and really evidence-based prevention. And it is about uh, quality system, it is about standards, and it is about dialogue between uh, uh, practitioners, prevention practitioners in school and in the field and academic sphere and professional societies, what is, uh, on the other hand, the main issue of my presentation for today. As I mentioned, our field, I mean prevention, is not still recognized as a unique film, field. And sometimes you can find the reactions and opinions of the people that what is, what is, what is it, prevention? And can you define it? And sometimes it's not so easy because there are sometimes uh, public health perspectives, there are uh, mental health perspectives. Uh, we, we have uh, many... Uh, uh, different point of view, psychological po point of view, pedagogical point of view, point of view, and it means that 
it's not so easy and at the same time when we are talking about multidisciplinary approach and everybody speaks about multidisciplinary approach sometimes it's not so easy how to uh, uh, really implement it how to uh, how to make it in in real uh, work in everyday work and that's another reason why we need to combine and make this dialogue and establish this continual uh, regular dialogue between academic sphere and, and practice. What's the prevention and what's the position of the prevention? Uh, if we are talking and thinking about our addiction field, the prevention is only part of it. And I think that we need to recognize it and, uh, and have uh, enough understanding and insight uh, into this position and uh, what is a really uh, delicate position because prevention is not so old and especially uh, uh, prevention evidence-based prevention is not so uh, old component and we need to know that at the beginning where activities related to self-help activities and, and self-help support and uh, professional services in prevention, in treatment, and including harm reduction or public intervention, doesn't matter what kind of, of term, uh, terminological uh, language you use. Uh, it, it's something what is uh, what is new, what, what, uh, what uh, uh, approached our field uh, later than self-help activities. And at the same time, uh, on the right side, you can see the list of uh, another activities, another stakeholders, another perspective in our field. And uh, it, it, that is necessary to, uh, to respect that we are talking about continued dialogue between these three uh, activities, between these three worlds, and uh, prevention is only part of it. And at the same time, uh, the real infrastructure in our field is usually in many countries defined by treatment services. In some countries, we have uh, well established also harm reduction services, but only in few countries, we have a real infrastructure of prevention providers. It means that we can find at the national level, very limited number of real professional providers of, uh, of prevention. And at the same time, the total number of professionals in this field is really low. And that's the reason why there is so limited number of people who are also focused on uh, prevention research, who are producing also uh, uh, prevention science. And that's also answer why we have a, uh, so limited number of professional societies uh, in prevention and specifically dedicated to prevention like uh, uh, Society for Prevention Research in United States or European Society for Prevention Research, USPR, in Europe. And we have some mirrors outside of, this two, of these two regions, but on the other hand, still, we have very limited number of professional societies dedicated specifically to, to prevention. If you would like to know more about these issues, I mean uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, institutional infrastructure, and uh, how is dialogue works, uh, you can find it in this in this paper what, what is displayed on my ResearchGate profile and you can find this paper on this profile and download it for free because it's open access uh, platform. So let's move to, to core uh, of our today, uh, today discussion and today presentation. We are talking about quality standards and real implementation of these quality standards. You can find many different international standards and on, on this list uh, uh, what you can see in my presentation is only some of the standards and of course uh, very important standards for us uh, are standards from uh, 2015 uh, created and published by UNODC and in Europe we have uh, something uh, similar uh, what, uh, what we call European Drug Prevention Quality Standards what was published in 2011 four years uh, before. We have also some first uh, uh, examples of national implementations and national uh, national quality standards. Uh, uh, what is, for instance, uh, uh, a case of, of the Czech Republic, what I will uh, speak about today. Uh, in this table, you can see uh, another standards. And at the same time, on the right side, you can see also uh, language mutations 
and where it's possible to find these standards and on the left side on the opposite side you can find the responsible body or publisher or responsible responsible organization what, what lead it uh, the process of creating and publishing of these standards and Gregor Burghardt from EMC DDA from uh, European Monitoring Center published very interesting overview of these standards including more details uh, and you can find it in his paper so what kind of standards we, we have and how we can use it At the first point and the first place we have uh, quality standards for interventions for uh, prevention methods uh, th these standards are usually defining key parameters uh, of this uh, of these methods of these interventions another uh, kind of standards are quality of implementation process and providing context. It's about delivery context or process perspective. Uh, another perspective is quality of institutional frame and providers. It means safety rules, uh, institutional aspects and, and issues like that. For uh, category uh, is quality of workforce what is really important because it's not so easy to to say who is prevention professional and who is enough qualified for doing a real and quality and safe prevention with kids and quality of workforce is very important issue also for today and I have an example for you how we deal with it last but not least is about ethical issues and ethical standard and it's very important part of the quality and and quality uh, uh, perspective in in prevention if we would like to know more about it uh, i think that uh, monography by zili sloboda professor zili sloboda was absolutely perfect and, and wonderful insight into these issues as I mentioned, uh, you can find many different perspectives in uh, uh, perspective on, on quality standards, and it's just about how much superficial or deep you want to be. And uh, there is very rich uh, theory behind it, and you can find many different perspectives how to make uh, the sorting system and create some typology. Uh, for uh, quality standards and this is example from 2011 uh, created uh, in the context of uh, ICUS project uh, run uh, in, in um, uh, Europe uh, under umbrella of EMC DDA and, and European countries. So my case study for today is very simple and it is about Czech Republic what is quite small country in the heart of, uh, of Europe and that's our experience how we how we deal and try to deal with it since beginning what is about more than 20 years long story and i will say and, and speak about some uh, interesting uh, experiences what we what we made with uh, uh, with quality standards at the beginning uh, in 90s we had uh, in our country almost nothing in in terms of quality and quality control in in prevention and so that's why I use this motto from Gestalt Therapy, uh, what is saying that if you want to call from Chicago, you have to be in Chicago. It means that you need to follow the real need and the real situation in the field. So we try to do it, uh, to do it in, in fact. And uh, at the beginning of this process, we created the national assessment with my colleague Pierre van der Kreft uh, from Belgium. Uh, in 1999 and we created this need assessment and did this need assessment for uh, Czech government and Ministry of Education and results and uh, it, uh, in that time were really set because we found that there is no frame framework for school prevention in the Czech Republic and there is no enough expertise and expertness for supporting and creating uh, something uh, like more sophisticated and uh, and there is zero about quality control. Uh, we had a group very active NGOs and uh, we had a wonderful contributions by NGOs in that time and I think from today perspective that without uh, NGO segment we were not able to do this job. At the same time, uh, we were inspired by a very long tradition of creating quality standards in treatment and rehabilitation in my country. 
So at the beginning was need assessment and we tried to develop something and it was made step by step with the Ministry of Education and at the same time we found that there is no joint strategy like uh, as I mentioned quality standards, terminology, examples of good practice and no, zero regulation of quality for workforce and another examples and I think that it was pretty good challenge to do something like that and uh, I think that motto yes we have a lot of plans but no experts and conditions on ministry okay let's to do it together and let's create it hand to hand with professional societies and and people people from NGOs and, and other bodies and it was about first national project what we did and what was conducted uh, for three years and uh, in, in the context of this project, we created totally new system, a national system uh, for school prevention in the Czech Republic. I'm using term uh, the system. What, it, uh, what does it mean, the system? At the beginning, we created a theoretical frame. What is it, school prevention? What kind of theories are behind school prevention? What we can uh, use for theory in prevention? What kind of interventions we can recognize? And what do we know about these interventions? We created explanatory dictionary for uh, uh, uni uniting uh, the terminology and our language because it was not uh, possible to speak with people from different areas because everybody used different language, different terminology, and we needed to have the same terminology and same language for talking about school prevention. It was at the beginning and, and we did it for the Czech national context, of course, in, in, in Czech language, because for many people in the field, uh, it's not so easy to read it in English or another language. Uh, we created first quality standards and you can see dates of publishing of these standards and first version we had in 2001 and we also created the national system for monitoring of uh, um, prevention interventions because we needed and we need to know who is doing what and providing uh, to whom it means what the context and situation in every single school in Czech Republic and I will speak about this, uh, this system later on. We also created a recommendable uh, curricula for Czech schools, what is good, what is enough, uh, what is appropriate for schools and Czech kids as a practical interventions and how to combine these interventions together. And last but not least, we also created the special uh, competency model for quality standards for workforce. Uh, we defined uh, what is the minimum qualification for doing and working with, with kids as a prevention specialist in, in the Czech Republic. So the first point and first uh, experience was with quality of methods and delivery context. That's first uh, standards and certification process what we created and I will speak about it briefly. And at the end, I will speak also about the national monitoring system, what we call SEPA, system of evidence of prevention interventions uh, in addictions. So from this timeline, you can see that it was not so easy and short way. And at the beginning was far at winning project, uh, what we used for a national need assessment, as I mentioned before, and uh, this timeline is representing the entire story. And as I mentioned, it's about 22 years long process of development from the beginning, from the need assessment to the final phase. And that's another, another reason why I used the family Greyjoy from a House of Thrones for a, a subtitle of this presentation, because right now, after more than 20 years, we have very deep crisis of uh, continuity in implementation process of quality standards and we have uh, many conflicts with ministries and between ministries and uh, I don't know what what will be the end of this situation but right now I have uh, uh, some time for reflection of this process and that's the reason that I can speak about with you 
and presented what we did and and i have to wait uh, uh, and push on the process uh, what will be the result of this crisis after 20 years of development of these standards and certification process so at the beginning we used a voluntary approach it means that we formulated uh, the national quality standards and we preferred to uh, to a, a apply formative evaluation it means that standards were available for people in practice for uh, ngos for uh, bodies delivering uh, school prevention uh, for kids and um, we believed that that's enough and that it can be fine if uh, the process will be not pushing on people but at the end, uh, since, be since beginning, we have had uh, uh, internal and external uh, explicit question, what is better, formative or normative assessment? And um, after six years, we found that there is a problem because uh, uh, we were missing permanent discussion about quality. And despite the fact that we had a relatively high quality standards, and we have uh, some this moderated discussion on our national conferences and local conferences about quality nobody cared about it and it was really frustrated to see that we have uh, very nice standards but uh, the real implementation was also about talking also uh, 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 only about um, uh, some reflection on uh, on uh, limited uh, meetings but it was it was everything and nothing more and at the same time the critical discussion was is it really enough uh, is it really stable and sustainable for for the future it costs uh, nothing it means that it's about zero cost for real using the standards but on the end the results were very poor because the real impact on the field was almost zero so we have uh, we have decided to change it and moved from voluntary uh, approach to compulsory approach. Why compulsory? Uh, we have very limited budget and I'm pretty sure that your situation in your countries is completely same. Uh, it's not, uh, and I think that it's never ending story that we have to be very careful with our national budget and support of school prevention because uh, our sources are always very limited and uh, we need to find connection between certification quality and uh, registration procedure it means in practice how to easily recognize enough quality providers and enough quality interventions for schools for teachers for kids and for uh, parents and at the same time we need to have a consistency in our policy uh, it's about a real national quality control system. It, the first aim is that we need to reduce a real risk behavior, the real consequences of behavior of our kids. It means that we can speak about attitudes, we can speak about a lot of nice things, but in fact, as a parents and as a teachers, we need to know that our work has a real impact on behavior of kids and this is about real reducing of risk behavior and second aim is to have a guarantee and responsibility for providing safe interventions because some interventions can damage kids they can increase for instance uh, they can increase probability of drug using and it is very sensitive issue because you need to be sure that your intervention is safe for kids and has a positive impact, not negative impact. And at the same time, if we are speaking about evidence based, I think and I believe that there is good to do something like evidence based approach and not just about ideological uh, attitudes and uh, ideological motives. Certification procedure it was very practical answer. It was very practical uh, contribution because we created uh, uh, a very practical procedure, how to check it. I mean, how to check all documents, how to make uh, side visits uh, of uh, providers 
and how to assess it step by step. And we created very formal procedure and, and committee uh, how to make this assessment with clear result. And our aim was we have a result, we, we, we have a certification system, and we need to have more donors, uh, more uh, uh, financial mechanisms and people responsible for, for supporting prevention to follow the standards and this certification process. So, uh, SEPA, as I mentioned, uh, uh, is a monitoring, national monitoring system. And as I mentioned before, we needed to have a national monitoring system for uh, as a standard procedure and uh, using uh, uniform terminology and uniform units based on exact definition of prevention interventions. It means what, what kind of interventions and time units, how long. If we are talking about our day, week, months, or year, or five years continuity, and at the same time we need to know more about qualification criteria, who is provided these uh, interventions, and if these people have enough qualification, uh, if they are enough qualified for doing this job. Uh, until this time, this national monitoring system is based on voluntary, strictly on voluntary level. And today, and I think that this is perfect example that it works. Uh, today, we have 1,700 schools participated in, uh, and and connected to this system. What is for your better idea? About 30% of all schools in the Czech Republic. It means that. 30% of all schools are using this national monitoring uh, um, system and every day we have a new school uh, joining us and using this, uh, this system um, uh, for their work and, and for, for their school. If you would like to know more about this output and this system, you can find it in a paper published by my colleague who is the main architecture of this system uh, is Professor Gaber Helig, who is my deputy for science on my department, and uh, and his father of this system and and develop it. And right now he's he's working on upgrade, uh, of upgrading of this system for uh, for national uh, for Ministry of Education. So let's move to the final part. What is about quality of workforce? I mentioned before that it's not so easy to define who is enough qualified for doing real prevention. Is it teacher? Is it psychologist? Is it GP, uh, general practitioner? Sometimes it's not so easy because if you check uh, curricula of these professions, uh, you can find really hardly find something relevant to school prevention. And uh, we need to be sure uh, about this qualification. And this was behind the idea what we had uh, 20 years ago and uh, why we created this system, how to assess uh, the qualification criteria of people uh, independently of their original profession. It means that uh, this model is strictly based on, on um, qualification model, uh, on competency model. And uh, doesn't matter if uh, you are a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a teacher, uh, whoever and whatever profession is behind it, uh, uh, we are assessing if you are qualified or not, how we did it. So I mentioned why we, uh, we, we, we think that it's uh, uh, necessary for the national system and that is necessary to have very clear definition. What's the, uh, what's the qualification standard? And our motto is very simple. Qualified staff means safety. Safety for kids and safety for staff. And if you are not enough qualified, you are danger for yourself and also for kids and, and parents. And we didn't have, and I think that it's uh, the same situation in other countries, we have no standard procedure for assessment, uh, something like that. And uh, I, I'm talking about st as standard mechanisms what failed in terms of managing and assessing who is qualified for doing school prevention. And again, we are talking about very different professional groups, about people working in school, 
also outside in school, uh, outside of school, like policy, uh, uh, police workers, uh, people from NGOs, volunteers, uh, health professionals like GPs, like psychologists, etc., and etc. So what we did, we created very simple concept on based on competency model based on knowledge, skills and competencies. And we were inspired by some first activities in the field and we tried to define very clearly core criteria and core levels for qualification in school prevention. Uh, we defined four different levels, basic level, intermediate level, advanced level and expert level, very briefly. Basic level is about something like introduction for uh, introduction to school prevention. It is for every teacher, every single teacher. It is about volunt volunteers. It is about just simple introduction, what the prevention is, and about some basic skills for touching uh, and using uh, prevention interventions. Intermediate level is about uh, something higher. It's about more experiences in terms of uh, theory, in terms of practice and practical experiences with more different uh, uh, interventions and a more uh, sophisticated approach in prevention. And of course, we have a third, the highest level, uh, we call it advanced level, what is about the highly uh, educated practitioners with systematic training in, in school prevention. The four, fourth level is about expert level because every time you need somebody who is providing guarantee, who is providing supervision, intervision, coordinating intervision and, um, and, and, and activities like that. So this highest level is for experts for providing support to, uh, to uh, former uh, levels, I mean basic level, intermediate level and advanced level. So we tested uh, on, on living experts in our field and uh, we did it in hand, uh, in hand to hand with Ministry of Education and Ministry of Health. And as I mentioned, we defined these levels in terms of theoretical knowledge, what's the minimum uh, hours, what you need for uh, taking basic knowledge about practical skills, practical training and self-experience. And on the right side, you can see total number Summar uh, uh, summarizing uh, how many hours you, do you need uh, for uh, achieving this level and this this um, uh, qualification. As you can see for expert level there is minimum uh, 300 hours but at the same time I have to emphasize that we are talking about special training only in prevention. It means that all of these experts have a university education and special training uh, in, in pedagogy or psychology and something like that. And this table is only about special training dedicated and focus on school prevention and that's it. So this is about uh, the content. This is about the way how we test it. It means that uh, you can see the list of our requirements, how we tested people and what they had to follow in terms of achieving the final exam and final qualification. And doesn't matter if these people had and have 20 years of experience and they are psychologists or medical doctors, doesn't matter. All of them need to know and need to follow this, this procedure. And we, had, we try to assess it and we conducted this, um, this uh, evaluation on more than 100 professionals from different um, uh, professional field. So the task of this evaluation uh, were really practical. We needed to know if uh, the practical uh, uh, experience is enough. It means if uh, we have a real tool for doing this expertness, for doing this assessment. And at the same time, we need to know how to prepare and how to manage, manage it on the national level. And uh, for idea like that, you need to know uh, more about cost because it's not cost free. And, uh, you know, if you would like to have a, something like that, that is necessary to have an idea about the cost and every kind of cost, of course. And at the same time, uh, we also uh, try to know more about legislation, because if you try to assess people and, and uh, provide this uh, qualification assessment, 
it's always very sensitive for, for the national context and for ministries. Uh, key outputs, very briefly. Uh, this four-level model works. It means that uh, the results were very clear and uh, we found that it's very easy to twist these professions and uh, we didn't have uh, any complications in, in a practical way. The competency model is adequate and doesn't matter that today we work on updating of the system and uh, it's more than 10 years old right now. On the other hand, it was enough and it was at the beginning perfect way how to start discussion about competencies for, for working in prevention. What is quite problem was that ministries don't care about it. I mean that we did it, we did it for ministries and they don't reflect these results. That's another way why I mentioned that uh, it's about uh, permanent frustration and, and permanent investing energy in, in, into this work. And our recommendation at the end was very clear. We need to start with voluntary approach, hand to hand with professional societies, independently on ministries, and don't wait uh, uh, for them and, and, uh, and changes of their attitudes. I think that we can start with it, and we, we have started with it, and we have a full support of professional society. And very practical example can be first step what we did after failing what we, what we had with ministries. And the first step is about establishing the first level, the A level, the, the, the basic level of the qualification in the model what I, what I, showed, uh, what I showed to you. Uh, and uh, it was uh, about using European curricula for, uh, for prevention and prevention practitioners. And we created national online course, what is for free for Czech practitioners. And that, that was the way how we defined this quality standards. And right now we are promoting this online course and people are following. And, and that was my surprise that people like it. And, uh, and we have very positive feedback from the field, from practitioners. And, and I see that it makes sense to me and, and, and it's, it's very motivated. So uh, I am at the end of my presentation and uh, I would like to summarize it. And at the beginning is uh, how to adapt and implement uh, national standards. At, at the beginning of my presentation, I, 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 I presented international standards and these standards are sometimes quite difficult to understand and uh, that is not so easy to know and, and, and to make it and to translate it into the national context. And uh, these standards have to be available at the beginning for people in national language. And I think that it's basic requirement. And in my eyes and from my point of view, I think that this is the perfect first step to translate international standards and start with uh, national discussion and promoting of international standards and talking about these standards. And I, th I think that this is about creating atmosphere, creating space and, uh, and taking attention uh, for this issue. And I think that that's logical to start something uh, with something like that because the real creating of national standards, it's very difficult process and it has to follow it. But on the other hand, the first stage should to be uh, translation and, and reflection of international context. Third step, third stage is about implementation, but a real implementation is totally different story because it's about practical impacts. It's about practical way, how to use standards and uh, there are just few countries with real experiences with uh, implementing of, uh, of standards, of quality standards. And at the same time, there are many issues, any questions what uh, you need to respond to, to, to uh, you need to answer uh, on, this, uh, on these questions. For instance, I try to, to, uh, to explain why we changed our point of view and moved from voluntary to compulsory, compulsory level because, and maybe it can be funny for you, on the other hand, it's not so funny because money talks always 
And if you have a limited sources, uh, you need to link quality with sources, with financial support of providers and, and high quality interventions. And in such case, you are on the really pink eyes. It's about very delicate position because you are regulating who is uh, receiving this governmental support and who is not receiving this support. And it's always very painful and very frustrated. And by the way, this is the reason why it is so difficult. Because if you are cutting off some providers from financial sources, these people are very angry, very aggressive. And you know, uh, I, I, I can preventing your question why we have a crisis right now after 20 years of developing something like that at the national level. The answer is very clear. It is about conflicts with lower quality interventions, with lower quality uh, providers. And these providers are behind these conflicts and are behind um, opening some discussions again and again and about compromising this system and, and, and opening new conflict again and again in this process and uh, as i mentioned real implementation and compulsory system linking to the governmental support it is about very hard hard work and about very dangerous way uh, third point is about collaboration between academic sphere prevention practitioners and professional societies and governmental bodies and you know it is about real collaboration, not about proclaiming of this collaboration, because you need it. And uh, the need is expressed every day in every dangerous situation if you are under pressure and attacking by some providers that they want to have a, a public sources, uh, the financial support from the ministries. It doesn't matter what the quality is. And, uh, and they have a totally different idea about uh, about uh, the, uh, how things work and uh, for you it's maybe just uh, uh, for taking inspiration there are some projects what were successful what were finished at the international level very nice example uh, can be edpqs uh, uh, project uh, in phase two and right now there is a european wide project uh, uh, acronym is Phoenix, led by Belgium, Professor Wouter van der Plaschen, and, uh, and uh, we are participating on this project and, and developing case studies from different uh, successful countries and successful case studies of real implementation of quality standards in different European countries. And right now we have started also preparing uh, Project WAVE with, with colleagues from Spain. So. This is the end of my presentation and I, I, I can go back at, at to the beginning and, uh, and speak again about <laughs> Game of Thrones and, and speak, about, uh, speak about difficulties related to the real implementation. And sometimes I think that it's really about everyday fighting for quality and, and this fighting makes sense. And it's very important for you, for your colleagues in your country, because without quality, you are not able to recognize what intervention is safe and what intervention is effective. And both requirements are crucial, are fundamental, because you need to be sure that your work is not damaging and has no negative impact on kids. And at the same time, you received money for prevention work because of impact, because of changing of behavior of kids in your schools and not because of talking about prevention and, and changing something. We need to change behavior. We need to know about the real impact, for instance, if kids are smoking cannabis or not, smoking tobacco or not, drinking regularly or not, and about real reducing and measurable outputs, not about at just attitudes. Attitudes are very important, but the real impact and real aim is about real behavior and real behavior is about real reducing of uh, of uh, 
uh, this negative be, uh, uh, impacts and uh, negative behavior uh, linked to the substance use uh, uh, disorders. And uh, I published this very simple paper about this everyday fight, and it was about my frustration 10 years ago when we have a first, we had the first crisis in implementation of our national uh, national system. So, you know, 10 years later, I have another crisis in my country and uh, I still believe that there is necessary to go with uh, uh, and face directly to this, uh, to this uh, fight and, and, and pass through and, and work with your colleagues in your countries and, and create something like national control system and quality standards and implement it in reality. So, Thank you for your attention and uh, I think that we will have enough space for your questions and hopefully I was enough understandable what I would like to express and, and send a message to you about our experience in my country about quality control system and real implementation of this system into the practice in our schools and everyday work with our kids. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mikhail, for uh, this interesting and fruitful presentation. Uh, we, we received a lot of questions, but uh, I would like to, to ask them all, but uh, due to the time restriction, I will uh, select some of the questions. The first question is about the role of school administrator in, uh, in substance use prevention. Yeah, this is a very good example and very good question because school coordinators in, in every single school is uh, the crucial pillar of the system. And at the beginning, we established this position very formally and very easy and, and fastly, we found that it, it, it is wrong concept and that these uh, coordinators in school needs uh, to have a, a real support and they, we need to pay them. <laughs> that it's not about formal posi position. And for instance, in one project 10 years ago, I tested uh, how much money we need for supporting these people. And I was really surprised that it is about very little money, very little amount, what we need for paying this work. And these teachers with special training in, in uh, coordinating work in prevention, uh, they were really successful and, and, and very uh, um, clever people. And uh, right now we have a special training for these people and uh, uh, we have uh, the perspective that these coordinators in school are crucial and they are our partners for, delivery, uh, for delivering uh, the, the prevention into the school and, and for real managing of program because you know you have a school with 500 or 1000 kids and you have a different age groups. You have a different levels of prevention and you to have a somebody with very special training who is able to manage it and create the system for the school and it's not possible to do it from outside of school there is necessary to have a somebody who is well established who is recognizable for the school and it means you are we are talking about somebody who is in team insider uh, Professor Mikhail, I, we received a lot of questions regarding the, the role of uh, the government how, and how we can uh, convince uh, policymakers uh, because when it comes to, uh, to the government level, it will affect all the school in the country. Uh, we yeah. have a lot of questions uh, in that, uh, that uh, objective. If you want to give us, if you can give us a small brief about how they can approach and uh, what, what we can do with the government in terms of school-based prevention and uh, specifically quality assurance. Yeah, that's, it became uh, that to be very frustrating to me because it's about very special presentation dedicated only to this issue because it's crucial. Yeah. My experience is that it's always very frustrated because politicians usually don't care about it and they have idea that prevention is like football. Everybody understands football and everybody knows about it everything and at the same time uh, politicians and policy makers usually like uh, prevention like billboards like campaigns and things like that but in fact this approach in prevention is less effective than another interventions and they don't care about higher sophisticated interventions and uh, from last years 
my experience is that we need to start talking about safety rules and safety of kids. And I see that this is a very important uh, issue what has great impact on their attitude. And if you are starting to say that, yes, but it is about potential hurting and damaging kids. And if you use wrong intervention in wrong age, you it, it, it you can find a very negative impact on kids and it is about your responsibility to deliver highly quality and safety uh, interventions and uh, my experience is that it, it is about much more effective sensitizing uh, politicians if you will speak about safety and it is more effective than you speak about effectiveness <laughs> that's strange but it works <laughs> and sure. at the same time from uh, another point of view it's always about lobbying it's always about promoting and explaining what is it it's about explaining that school prevention is highly sophisticated and highly professional work that you need a special training for that you need a special interventions for that and it means that they need to understand that this is about same situation like with gynecology like in uh, dentistry like in clinical psychology uh, do you want to send your kids to the professional without yeah. zero without any training without zero exp with zero experience with me methods and interventions and we need to explain it on these examples that it's completely same and prevention is highly sophisticated activity where you need very special training and education for doing something like that. Uh, we have a question a little bit related to this one. It's about uh, someone who's working with an NGO who's saying we want to build the capacity of teachers to provide the programs in schools but regarding how we can secure the quality assurance uh, can we can we do it via uh, the, the teacher themselves, or we should uh, do an intervention by ourselves and the NGO? Perfect question. Both. Uh, there is no possible to, deal, to deliver all kinds of interventions that are appropriate and what are adequate uh, by only insiders but, but, or only outsiders. It means that you need to combine both approaches. For instance, we created a hierarchic model uh, of school interventions and we are using a very simple sorting system, universal prevention, selective prevention and indicated prevention. This is sorting system developed and used by European Monitoring Center, EMCDDA in Lisbon, and you probably know about it very well. And for uh, universal prevention, my point of view is that interventions in this category is uh, perfect if uh, the school is delivering this intervention by teachers and uh, doesn't matter that you need to train this teacher you need to support this teacher you need to supervise this work on the other hand teachers are usually enough qualified and perfectly prepared for universal prevention and there is absolutely enough to provide only specific training for specific methods yeah. but for selective prevention and indicated prevention that's different story because it's so highly sophisticated and you are so close with kids in terms of using your uh, interventions your your tools and in terms of your relationship in terms of intimacy of work, working with kids and uh, for these methods for these interventions in the category of selected and indicated prevention you need to have a much higher and much better training than only basic pedagogical training and and something like that and it means that we try to do a border or edge between universal prevention and push on schools for de delivering universal prevention by teachers and workers inside of school and split it and the second part represented by selective and indicated prevention we push on schools to invite people from outside 
and our responsibility is to push on the system for guarantee that these people from NGOs and from some another services outside of school have a real qualification and enough quality qualification for doing this special job for school. And that's our approach and we try to mix it together and I really believe that this is about uh, uh, the best way how to how to how to provide uh, all kind of pre of uh, prevention to to the kids uh, professor mikhail our last question regarding how we can adapt it's someone uh, also from an ngo how to how we can adapt an international standards regard international standards regarding school based prevention as the ngo the entity itself yeah that's pretty difficult because the real adaptation is not uh, is not about simple translation and uh, simple translation can produce a lot of misunderstandings because in every country we have uh, a yeah. different terminology and uh, different theoretical background and um, different atmosphere and um, and terminological traditions and uh, real adaptation is about uh, inviting people from different sectors, for instance, from NGOs, from schools, from ministries, and for academic sphere, for instance. And uh, you need to create team of people for doing this real adaptation because sometimes some criteria and some requirements can be uh, really questionable if they are adequate for your uh, local culture and uh, an economical context and for instance we have uh, in europe we have uh, many countries where some uh, criteria are not adaptable and are uh, we, we cannot use it simply cannot use it and it means that you need to have a discussion about every single criteria and it's about a uh, quite difficult process in in focus groups and and methods like that where you can find the best translation and the best uh, uh, reflection uh, how to translate this requirement particular requirement and at the same time if it is adequate and how to make it real how to make it understandable for your national context and for your uh, colleagues and sometimes we are adding for instance some explanations and additional information about some criteria because it's necessary because some criteria are not understandable for, for our colleagues. And it means that it's, it's not so easy and it's not simple translation uh, from English or, or, or uh, Russia or, or German language into the another language. It, it, it's about a very difficult and delicate, delicate, delicate uh, uh, work, expertness work. Uh, thank you for this ans answer, because uh, a lot of time when we want to adapt international standards or uh, any program that uh, evidence-based program or any program coming for outside the country, uh, for us, uh, for the local NGOs or for regional NGOs, it's a, it's a little bit challenging because sometimes you, you, you thought that you have to take it uh, by words. And uh, by, your, by your answer, you showed us that, no, we have to do focus group. We have to understand uh, the general idea. We have to adapt it to our local context. And otherwise, we will not be able to implement it. Yeah, that's, that's again, that's the reason why I was so pushing uh, to collaboration and, 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 and establishing this collaboration. Because, for instance, uh, for me, it was not possible to do it uh, without NGOs. But on the other hand, uh, 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 the NGOs have no position, usually have no position for taking leadership in this process. And sometimes in many countries, including mine, is not so uh, easy way how to promote voice and make visible voice of NGOs for governmental structure. And that's the reason why I think that it's uh, adequate to create collaboration with academic sphere and special institutions in your country and establish professional society because it's something what is recognizable for the governmental structure and governmental bodies. Thank you, Professor Mikhail, for this important webinar. Uh, it was our pleasure uh, today to host you in this webinar. Uh, and uh, it was my pleasure to meet you in person and in, in several international conferences and i know how much you are 
uh, you are very well known not not only in uh, your theories and what you speak about it's about your practice because all uh, all practitioners and all specialists in the field take uh, always what you did in Charles University and in Czech Republic as an example for Europe and uh, we are all learning from your experience and today uh, it was a great presentation I want to thank you for your time for your uh, professionalism for your uh, will to, to do and to provide this information for uh, students, professionals and practitioners in the field. Thanks so much. It was my pleasure and my great honor. Thank you for your, for, for your invitation and please have a nice day and stay safe in these hard times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mikhail. For our professional and drug, pre drug use prevention field in Lebanon, please apply for free membership on ISAP website. To, to stay updated with the latest information and follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook to learn about our future activities. Thank you and have a great afternoon. Thank you, Dr.